This video segment is a small part of what the Market Guys offer through their educational products and services. If you are interested in any of our trade alert services or you would like more information about our one-on-one -on -one mentoring program, simply contact us at info at themarketguys.com. Well, good evening, everyone. This is AJ Monty dialing in from Cedar Key, Florida. And I'd like to welcome you to tonight's open house Q&A. I say good evening uh, with a heavy heart for those who are dialing in from, from Toronto. Uh, for those who are not up to speed on the news, there was a horrific assault on pedestrians there in Toronto. They've apprehended the, um, the killer. And, um, and there's lots of mourning going on right now. And again, I know a lot of people that follow us from Toronto may not even be on tonight's call, but for those who are, uh, our prayers are, are with you and, and, and the victims there. So uh, as usual, I, uh, I have a chart up here and that's Baidu. I'm starting off with this one only because this was a, a this is our most profitable stock posi uh, position for the option traders. And we have been uh, working a spread that is that continues to just give us money. It's it's just amazing. And I just want to show you this spread. Let me see if I have. Uh, I think I have the uh, the PDF document open here. Okay, here it is. Now this this is what went out to our option trades. If you're not an option trader, it's okay. The lesson here will be all about technical analysis, I assure you. And um, and so Baidu, where is it? Uh, here it is. Um, we are long the January 280 puts. And we, we put that spread on some time ago. And obviously when, and this is obviously to the option traders, when you buy a put, you want the stock to go down. And that's exactly what happened with Baidu. And then once the stock dropped, we put on a hedge position and we sold the front month puts against the long put position. Now, follow me here because I don't want to confuse anyone who knows nothing about options. The bottom line is we put on a spread that's making us money. And as long as this stock stays close to the $230 level, which is where we've sold the options. When you do an option spread, uh, it's important to know that the max potential or the max profit is realized when the stock gravitates to the strike price that you're short. And so we took in a $6 credit last week, and if it stays right where it is, right around 230 you can see it close to 231.42. It doesn't get more perfect than this. And if it stays around this level or if it stays within these channel lines that I drew, our option trader is going to be making a big chunk of money next expiration as well. So uh, I start off by telling you this because if there's anyone who's an equity trader who has been at least thinking about trading options, we have... Uh, we have resources for you. You could start off with the book. You know, uh, the Five Points for Trading Success has two chapters that explain basic options. I have web seminars that I'm that are coming up in June through Scotia iTrade, where I'm going to go through basic options and option spreads. Uh, we have, of course, the mentoring program that starts you off with with your level of, of understanding and we gradually go from there and, and it's just a really, really comfortable experience. And I've been trading options since 1985. And so I feel very comfortable. And, and when you combine option strategy with technical analysis, uh, I mean, if you're not convinced that technical analysis is the main tool to use for forecasting, then you just haven't been in the markets long enough to understand that. But th these these stocks are trading right in line with our technical uh, signals, right in line with them. So with that said, let me go to the diamonds and I'm going to just do a recap. And, and by the way, if you have any questions that come up during the presentation, just type them into the Q&A box down there 
and I'll be picking those up as we gradually uh, gradually go go along here. Okay, so this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, and this diagonal line right here is what I drew for uh, last week's market report. I said that we would most likely go lower. Today we had a pretty big down day, and then the buyers towards the end of the day came back. And, and so what that means is, although I still have a target down here, look at the number of red candles that have already shown on the chart between today and last week. We now have five red candles in a row. Who could tell me what five red candles in a row means? What's that called and what does it mean? Anyone want to volunteer an answer for that? Just go right ahead, type that in. Yes, Stuart, you're right. That's a stale red light. And a stale red light means that we are overdue or coming close to a green light or a green candle. So understand that my target is still down here, but we might see a little bit of bouncing along the way. Tomorrow we might see a green candle before we see another red candle. Or we might see two green candles before another big red candle and hit the target. But my overall forecast is that we will go lower this week and into next week. And I, I think that there's uh, enough uncertainty, uh, geopolitical uncertainty, economic uncertainty, um, national debts in countries around the world are still screaming to record highs. Uh, today we had news that there were, I think, four states that hit all-time record low unemployment. But what? It, but that doesn't help the national debt. It helps people with jobs and managing in a, in a tougher economy ahead. But we're not getting, and I say we as a nation here in the U.S. and even Canada, Canada is better off than the U.S. with their debt. But you have to understand that eventually that bubble is going to break and you have to know how to handle yourself and how to manage your money moving forward in, in highly volatile times. So uh, that's my, my spin on the diamonds. Now, if I go to the spiders, which is the S&P 500 ETF, that meant that 500 stocks, again, um, I left my lines up from the last two uh, alerts, the weekly market reports, and you can see that last week we did go up. As I said, we filled the gap. After we filled the gap, the 80% rule came into place. 80% of the time after a gap fills, it reverses. It did just that. Today, we have another red candle with today's low touching my forecast line. And again, I, I see four red candles in a row. We might see a green candle tomorrow, mainly because I see the volume dropping here. So again, we might bounce our way down to the lower level. So don't be uh, um, you know, just jumping in to a long position because you see a green candle uh, after a series of red. There I, I'm still pretty bearish. If you look at the S&P, and I mentioned this in the weekly market report, we still have successively lower highs here, and but we're holding the lows. So we're, I didn't draw this on the weekly market report, but if I back this out to a, a weekly candle chart, you'll see up here, this is a very uh, impressive triangle pattern that's forming at the top. And even on the weekly chart, you can see how aggressive the sellers have been in pushing the highs lower. If we break down, if the, if the S&P breaks support line, which is really taken from the week of February 5th of this year, uh, then that is going to be a critical support level that if we break that, you're going to see much lower prices on the uh, the. Uh, so again, I'm very, very cautious in any of the long positions I have and our option traders, our option traders are shifting to more bearish positions to capture money on the way down. So that's the S&P. Uh, which is the NASDAQ market. Uh, you can see, again, my forecast spot on. Today's low, very close to my forecast line and touching this 20-period moving average. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow and or Wednesday we do a little bounce before going lower. But I still think by the end of the week we're going to go lower. We filled the gap here, and there's still an open gap above the market. 
the you know the jury's still out on this one whether or not it's going to fill right away. I have a t I think it's not uh, going to fill right away at least until we test the support level down here. So, so that's the cues. The Russell 2000 uh, more broad based index, but there's my forecast lines right there. I think we'll pull back to that 20 period moving average. So right now it still shows that the bears are in control because even on the Russell 2000, which uh, is a much more broader index than the S&P 500 and the Dow even combined, uh, you have lower highs up here, uh, followed by higher lows. So we have another big triangle pattern forming on this weekly chart as well uh, up here. Okay, now if I if I jump to the final chart, which is the VIX, and then I'm going to take your stock symbols. I said that the VIX would most likely bounce. It did and continue higher. If I zoom in a little bit more, you'll see that we barely the VIX barely set a higher high here, um, and we have a higher low, which is pretty obvious. But we barely set a higher high from Friday's close on the VIX. And so this will most likely pull back tomorrow. You'll probably see a lower high on the VIX, which could spark a, a slight rally in the S&P for the day. Uh, again, uh, this, is, this is a big earnings week. There's a lot of stocks that are coming out uh, this week, uh, Dow stocks and, and NASDAQ stocks alike. So it depends on how how the investors are going to react to the earnings, whether they be surprises or disappointments, we don't know yet. But it, a lot's going to depend on how investors react to that that earnings release news. So again, stay on guard, watch on, you know, watch your news sources and, and see um, see what you could do there. Now, uh, now Ron, uh, I'm sorry, Bill Wilson said, is that an island reversal on the queues? Let's see. Uh, take a look at that. Um, you could that that could be taken as an island top, but the the, the result of that uh, has already resulted in a sell off from that. Uh, so I, I I don't think it's going to be like a head and shoulders top. I still think that there's room for that to fill up up top there. Uh, but again, we'll have to see if the if the markets bounce off of any support down here. Okay. Now, uh, speaking of an island, let, let me show you another definition. And Bill, thank you for that question. One of our one of our subscribers uh, took a position last week in uh, Alcoa, and uh, and what happened is, and I'll show you two two positions that were traded very uh, very nicely. Um, on this candle, which was Thursday, uh, this gentleman bought puts, and this was his very first option trade. And I'm using this again as a plug as to how powerful options can be. And he he just bought a couple of puts right here at, on this candle. Now why? Now remember these two candles, Friday and Monday, did not they weren't even on the chart. And this when I when I was speaking with him, this is what. I drew as a forecast for Alcoa. Um, the rubber band was stretched. We see that the, the divergence from the moving average is wide. There was a very long shadow above the market right there. There was a super high volume on that particular day as well. And so buying puts is a bearish strategy. And he bought the puts. And boom, today we gapped down hit the target price right there he got out he made his money and end of story now uh i i, I sometimes um I, i'm sometimes disappointed that people that, that trade options for the very first time have such great success because i'll tell you it's not always that easy it, this happened to be one of those perfect first trades ever uh, but if you ever decide to trade options and you have early success, understand that it that you never get 100% profits on every one of your trades. There's always going to be losers mixed in with the gainers. The whole game is that you have more winners than you have losers. And, and the ones that do lose, you're controlling the loss through the 1% rule so that if, if a position goes against you, you're not 
taking a bath on it, you know? So that, that what happened there is uh, it, it just, it gapped up, it gapped down rather. And uh, it, it had a gap up back here and it looks like it's on its way to maybe fill that gap. Um, so that, that was a really good trade. And uh, what I was talking about with is if you look at the weekly chart on this one, um, there's still a gap down here. It's not even a definition of an island gap as I'm looking at it, but there is a gap up up here now. Um, a, a, an island gap is when it gaps up, hangs out, and then all of a sudden there's a big gap and there's just like these candles that hang out at the top up here. So that worked, that worked out. Oh, I, I remember the island gap. Here it is. It, it was in... Um, it was in silver on the daily charts. Here we go. This is this is the one I wanted to talk about. Now, over over the months, I think I've mentioned many times that I have a very concentrated position in SLV. I, I, I um, have this in a retirement account, but when the stock uh, opens itself up to opportunity, I will find windows of opportunity in an effort to parlay the position. And, and what I want to do is go over what I had done so that if you have a retirement account, you know exactly how to do this and you're not over trading your retirement money. So right here on, uh, that was on the 17th of April, we see a bullish engulfing pattern. Now this bullish engulfing pattern was happening right at the top of the triangle. And it just so happened, let me zoom in here a little bit for you. Just so happened that on this day on the 17th, the stock closed, not just with a bullish engulfing pattern, but it closed over the upper triangle line. So now I saw that and I bought a little bit more towards the end of the day. And then I'm waiting. I didn't expect it to gap, but I did expect it to go up. Well, lo and behold, on the 18th, it gapped up, and it gapped up on lower volume. So what I did here on this green day on the 18th is I sold half of my, my position. I sold half of it. Then it went up a little bit more on lower volume, and I sold another 25% of what I had left here. And then, boom, it started to come back down. I'm feeling really good. Today, I bought back all of the shares that I sold here because I have to wait another day to buy these shares back. It's T plus two, trade A plus two on the settlement. So today, what I did is, see, because in a retirement account, you can't just put more money in to buy, right? So what do you do? You have to create your own buying power. So when I sold half the position up here, I then waited for it to drop, and when it dropped today, I bought back more shares than what I sold on Wednesday. Does that make sense? So in a retirement account, if you're looking to accumulate a position, it's not so much how much money you're making on the upswings and the downturns. It's how many shares can you get to accumulate for a long-term hold on your position. You see, I think I think ultimately, if you look at silver, and I'm a, I'm a big bull on this. I think ultimately, this is a a 20 year triangle pattern we're talking about here. This is 20 years. When this thing breaks out, and I think it's going to break out to the upside, there is enormous potential here for silver. And so I don't think it's out of the question for silver to even double from current prices. For it to go from here from $30 to $32 is only going to bring you up to this resistance level up here. And, and so it looks it looks very, very strong right now. And I'm, I'm just pointing this out to you, not so much to sell you on the idea of buying silver, but to really explain to you the idea of how to maneuver in a, in a retirement account without day trading your retirement account. I've, I've run into a lot of people over the years who think, well, I could trade my retirement money because I, I, the losses don't really count. I'm thinking, what do you mean? Well, I don't have to pay taxes on the gains, uh, but but guess what? If it's, a, if it's a, 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 a funded, if it's very well funded and you're taking losses and you think, oh, it's not going to be that painful, uh, you're, you're losing your retirement money. And I think it's a really bad idea to overtrade your retirement account. 
if you find a couple of positions that you could hold and then you sell periodically, you hardly ever sell all of it, but you sell periodically when you see a, a big gap up or a doji or a bearish engulfing pattern, you sell some of it, wait for it to come back down, take the money that you have sitting in cash now, buy those shares at the lower price, and now you could buy more shares than what you originally sold. That's the whole idea of parlaying a retirement account for swing trading. Okay, so that's... Uh, that's my spin on the markets, and that's my two individual, individual stocks I'm going to talk about. Now, Ron said um, now you could start putting in your uh, your stock symbols. I'm, I'm looking. I'm scanning here. Okay, so uh, BGFV is is what Ron is putting in. Now, if you could, uh, like Ron did, uh, if you could tell me what your idea is on the stock. That way I, I know where to help you with support and resistance. Now, this stock right here, this is a daily chart. Uh, Ron, immediately, immediately I see a couple of things that catch my attention. Number one, there is a very stale green light here. See that? There's six green candles in a row. The good news is, is that for the buyers or, or those who are hold, holding it, the good news is the volume is increasing. But there are six green candles in a row. Second thing that catches my attention is that there is a wide divergence from that moving average. And you can see, looking back at the stock, it does not like to stay that far above the moving average. Last time it was even close was back here in June of 2017, and then shortly after that, it snapped back to the moving average and then continued to go down. So you got to be really, really careful with this one. Your question is, what would be a good entry point? I would say wait for the stock to pull back to this uh, former resistance back here in December of last year. Wait for it to pull back to that, to that point. Let me get rid of this now that you already know the rubber band is being stretched. Wait for a pullback. And then wait for the pivot point bounce before getting in. So right around 8, 825, 830, right around there would be a better entry point. Again, as long as you're seeing the pivot point bounce off of that role reversal support. Once you buy it, you could either put your stop right below that support, or by the time this all happens, that moving average is going to most likely keep creeping up. It'll probably look something like that. So if, if you buy it on a pivot point here, you might want to put your, your stop right below the 20-period moving average when you, that's, that's good and clear for you. So it looks to me like you'd be putting your stop, maybe you could even put it uh, 75 cents below your buy price. And, and then trail your stop up with the price of the stock. Now that we looked at the daily chart, let's look at the weekly chart. Weekly chart is interesting. Um, it, it almost looks like the stock does want to pull back to form a cup and handle down here. But look at this, Ron, on, uh, on the weekly chart, you got these green candles, but look at the volume is, is kind of stalled here. Not necessarily trending lower, but it's stalled. So the buyers may be running out of steam on that one. All right, hopefully that helped you out. Okay, Sean says uh, VIAV, looking for a short position. Let's take a look. V I V I. How come it's not going there in my box? There it is. Okay, V I A V. And let's take that's the. Oh, look at that. Talk about cup and handle. This looks like a cup and handle on the weekly chart right here. Um, so there is some resistance up, up here right around the 10, 1060, 1070 level. So Sean is looking uh, for an idea on a short position. He, he shorted it at, um, at 1015. Okay, so let's take a look at the daily chart now. Now, Sean, be, before we get into this, it, it looks it looks good. Your short position looks really good. The only thing I want to tell you is that this 20-period moving average right around 990, that is going to act as support. 
you could see that it acted as support back here. Uh, the moving average many times will play that role reversal uh, that we talk about all the time. And so you have one, two, three, four red candles in a row. You have a drop in volume today. I wouldn't be surprised if we go a little bit lower and then it bounces off of that 20 period moving average. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I think it will bounce that it, it, it's more or less happening outside of this, this stock. And that's exactly what I mentioned on the diamonds and the S and P we have stale red lights on those markets. So if the, if the S and P, the Dow, the Russell 2000 bounce tomorrow, then this stock could actually go up in sympathy with the rest of the market rallying. So if you have a short position, I know it's not a whole lot of money, but you know, you already have 17 cents profit. I would, I would move your stop down. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit here, maybe down to 1020 instead of 1028. And then you're only risking five cents, but I, I, I don't know how many shares you took in the short position, but if you see any kind of a bounce off that 20 period moving average, you might want to buy the shares back, wait for it to bounce and then short it again up here after it pulls back from a resistance point a little bit lower, right around 1040. That's the way I would play that one. I would probably take a quick profit on that and then look to reposition myself in the short position after the bounce. All right. All right. Let's see. Uh, D. Uh, McLean is uh, A B E O. Let's see. A B E O. Take a look at that one. Oh, sell it. Boom. All right. Um, I say sell it because that's my my first reaction right there. Is um, let's see. Had it called away on Friday, but wanted to rebuy. Well, don't. I wouldn't rebuy it now. Be be happy you got it called away. Uh, what strike price did you sell that you got it called away? The $20, $20 or lower? Let's say I'll wait for that answer to come up. But uh, look at look what's happened here. Talk about technical analysis as a tool. There you go. You got a resistance area up here. Today we had a bearish engulfing pattern on super high volume that engulfed uh, Friday's complete trading range. So this most likely is going to go lower. And this rubber band is so stretched, I think that this one could actually bring it back down below that 20 period moving average. So you, you sold the $20 calls. Perfect. It's at 20 right now. Uh, here's an idea for you. If you're looking to get long the stock, I would wait for it to pull back, maybe around the $17 level, and then see if they have any June puts you could sell, let me see if there's any June options that have any premium. Um, I would probably sell the 17 and a half puts, not now, because you, you could probably sell them for one and a half. But what I would do when, when you get called away on a stock, what I normally do is I challenge the market to try to give me the stock back. So if this stock drops two and a half dollars, those seventeen dollar puts are going to be trading exactly where the twenty dollar puts are right now. They're going to be trading for around three dollars. So what you could, again, when it comes back to this moving average, sell the seventeen and a half puts for three dollars, and then hope they give you the stock back. And if not, you get to keep the three and a half dollars. Done. You you keep that as a profit. So you make money on the way up. You make money on the way down. By keeping these premiums, and you're you're in good shape. So I think that's a that's a really good one. You see, for the option traders out there, you know, I always tell people to, if if at the very least, be a fly on the wall for you know these open house sessions. You're going to get ideas. Here's a stock I never would have looked at. I never would have looked at this one, but there you go. It's one that is, is showing a beautiful bearish engulfing pan. The rubber band is being stretched. It's most likely going to pull back. you got a gap below the market. Uh, it trades options with healthy premiums. So what you do when you see a stock like this and you're on the Q&A, you add ABEO right there. You add ABEO to your watch list and just watch it. If, if you're not going to trade, at least watch it to see. Uh, a lot of times you'll notice it on my left-hand side here, I have a watch list that's pretty pretty extensive. You see all these stocks here. I don't trade all of these stocks. 
what I do when I'm looking for a candidate, I could I could list my my uh, list by alphabetical order, or I could list it if I'm looking for a certain price range. I could list it from cheapest stock to highest price stock. You see how I changed the column right there, and when I get out of one position, I all I do is I just start scanning like this. I just hit the down arrow and I just scan. I just start scanning. Uh, for stocks, so here's one right there. Look at that, Bear, a bullish engulfing pattern, ETM. We've traded that one before. Uh, Ford, oh, that looks pretty strong. Look at that. See, I'm just going through the list here. This one, AOBC, looks like it's holding a nice upward trend even in a down day like today. Boom. So I just go through the market. Oh, there's one. I got to back up. That's a short candidate right there. Look at that. Look at that stale green light all the way. Rubber bands being stretched. Volume is, is dropping. Uh, I see a very, very minor gap, if a gap at all down here. But there's a candidate where I might say, okay, let me buy some puts on that. Do they trade puts? Oh, look, they have options. Let's go buy some puts. You see, that's how I, that's how I shop. I don't turn on BNN when I'm in Canada or CN, CNBC when I'm in the U.S. I hardly watch any television, hardly ever. I look at the markets. That's my extracurricular activity. I love looking at these charts. Even when I'm not trading any of them, I love looking at them because what happens is I get excited when even now after oh, how many years? Now, 30, I mean, 35 years. Uh, hold on. 36 years I'm in the markets. 36 years. 1982 I came in the markets. And um, what, what you do is I like looking at the charts because now I look at the stock. I see that there is a uh, stale green light. I might draw a forecast line on this one and never trade it. I mean, never trade it. But you know what? Next time I'm scanning it, I'll say, oh, I'm, I'm going through my list again. I'm scanning, scanning, scanning. Oh, oh look at that. There's a. There's that stock I was looking at. What happened to my charts here? There's that stock I was looking at. Oh, and oh, look how it followed my my forecast line perfectly. You know, so there's my forecast line for the stock. And when I stumble on it and it looks like it's getting ready to bounce, I might get it in and run the long side. You see? I mean, if I wasn't taking any position, if, if we didn't have as many positions as we have now, I would be shorting this stock right there. And, and that that's a, that's a good candidate. So that's my opinion. All right. Now, um, so going back to my watch list, when I, I see a good stock, I look at it. Now, let's say, for instance, you, you, you don't you don't have anything on your watch list. Another good way is to open up um, a lot of the platforms have the top the top movers, top movers and shakers. Or this one is entitled the top uh, the 10 excuse me, the top 10 sizzling stocks. Again, these are stocks I have not traded. Let me just uh, short my screen now. Okay. I have not traded any of these, but let's go shop. I'm, I'm going to show you how I add stocks to my watch list. Now, here's a stock that's in a pretty significant trading channel, right? There you go. There's, there's a, a downside support, upside resistance. I wouldn't buy it right now, but it's priced pretty cheaply. It's around $5. Let me put that one on the watch list, all right? LSCC. There you go. I just added another stock to my watch list. It's now on my official watch list up top. Let's keep going down. Hit my down arrow button. Is another one. Washington Prime Group. Sounds like an insurance company. Know nothing about them. It looks like it's got a, some stale red lights. Probably going to bounce soon. You know, if I was looking for a cheap stock, I might wait for a green candle on that one. Um, here's one uh, holding steadily over a, over the twenty uh, the twenty day moving average. Why this is a uh, on the sizzling stock list? I don't know because uh, it doesn't look like it's sizzling. It looks like it just had a good update. Maybe because they had a high volume today that they think that's sizzling. I don't know. But hey, there's a cheap stock for you if you want to trade it. Boom, put your forecast line. So, okay, I think it's going to go up to 10 to test resistance up here at the top. I'll buy this one at 893. I'm sorry, I'll buy this one at 930. Put my stop below 893, which is the the uh, 20 period support level there. And then I move on. There you go. Let's see if we find any other stocks I can put on my watches. So I'm just going to go quickly. There's a sizzling stock right there. Uh, I wouldn't trade that one though, because 
sizzling too much. It might burn your fingers. There's another, I would say that's a sizzling stock. This one, uh, Gardner Denver Holdings, uh, green candle, but it still had a down day. I don't know. Nothing really strikes me. I'm looking for something that might really pop off the chart for me. Here's one that's in an upward trend, but it has a bearish engulfing pattern. If you like to trade bearish engulfing patterns, chances are this one's going to drop. There's a gap down here below the market that might fill. There's a short candidate for you. If they trade options, you might look to buy puts on that one. So, again, these are just ideas and how I look for stocks. Now, I don't always go through the top 10 sizzling stock list like this. I don't always do that. I do it periodically when I'm looking or if I maybe have removed a stock from here. Let's say, see, if I go up here and I say, well, let me, let me get this off uh, the way here. I got that. I got to move that. There we go. Okay. So if I'm, if I'm listing this, um, if I'm listing this on, uh, on, on my watch list and I want, I'm looking, I want to clean up my watch list here. I'm going to take this one off. Why? Because it's only trading five cents. There's no need for me to have that on my stock list anymore. So I take that one off, go down here. This is uh mountain, uh, mountain province diamonds. I kind of like that one. If I'm looking for a cheap stock, I, I'm going to keep that one on there. BIT, so this is a Bitcoin. I'm just tracking. I'm, not, I'm probably never going to trade it, but I'm tracking it because you know, people still enthralled with the Bitcoin market. I, I want to at least educate myself on some of the stocks that trade in there. So again, I'm just giving you these ideas. So you know, if, if you ever are looking for um, different um, strategies as well, uh, I, I, I hope my partner is listening. I, I submitted a, uh, a video. We're adding strategy videos to the Market Guy library. All right, so keep your eye on that one. I, I, put, I put on trading channel, trading, trading the channels as a strategy discussion. So look for that one. Okay. Deb is asking me to look at TMUS. Let's take a look at TMUS and Deb is long it at 6101. So TMUS, that's T-Mobile US. Long, ah, I don't like that one right now. That's a pretty big red candle. Um, see, Deb, this is one of those things where, you know, I don't, I don't want to give you individual advice on how to trade your money because I don't know what your risk tolerances are. I don't know how much you're trading with. But let me just say this. Whenever you are in doubt as to what, what to do with a stock, just like now, let's say, okay, you're by yourself, you're looking at your computer and you're thinking, I'm long this stock at 61. I have a profit in it. You know, what should I do with it? That's the question, right? Well, the way you answer the question is, if I'm looking at this chart for the very first time and I don't have a position in the stock, would I be taking a long position in the stock today? And the answer to that question would be no. Why? Because you have a big, uh, you have a big red candle. It looks like it's pulling back towards this moving average. And you have a resistance area up here at around 60, was it 6370, right around there. So if, if it was me trading that stock, I would take my profits, I would wait for the bounce right around 61 and a half, and then I would get back in, only if it bounced. If, if on the way down, it starts closing below that 20 period moving average, I then wait, and now I'm shopping at an area down here around 59. You see, this stock looks like the highs and the lows are converging on one another. You see that? I'll, I'll, I'm going to erase all the lines here now that I've described the chart to you. And then I'm going to back up the chart to a weekly chart so you can see that there is actually a triangle forming on this, on this stock. You see, the, the, lows are, the highs are getting lower and the lows are getting higher. There you go. See, there's your triangle. Okay, there it is. Now, look at the weekly chart. There is right now, as of today, because this is Monday, that's why this one is showing such a big red candle and the volume is low because it's only Monday. But right now, 
there is a weekly bearish engulfing pattern there. So this stock could wind up getting right back down to the bottom triangle line and bouncing right around 60, which isn't far from what we talked about on the daily chart. So there you go. That there, There's the evidence coming from the chart. Is it absolutely going to go down tomorrow and the rest of the week? No, of course. We don't know that. I'm just, I'm just interpreting what the charts are telling us. And because the stock has such a history of following through on bearish engulfing patterns, look at this. Look at this bearish engulfing pattern back there. Wow, that's a powerful one right there. Here's a bearish engulfing pattern right here. See, big, long red candle engulfing the previous green body. It went down. Um, let me see. Do we have any bullish engulfing patterns that this one follows? Yeah, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. here's a bullish engulfing pattern right there. Boom, beautiful on the weekly chart. So when you're looking at positions, don't just look at the intraday charts and the daily charts. Look at the weekly charts as well, and you're going to get a lot of good information from that. Okay. Now, hey, Eric, how are you? Okay. Uh, Eric's question is, what do you think of Apple bull put spread? Again, for those who are not uh, trading options, I will explain to you that a bull put spread is bullish. Okay. That's, that's in the title of that. Uh, I'll say APL. There we go. It's bullish. Now, um, I just flipped because I was on the other weekly chart, Eric. I just flipped uh, to the weekly chart on Apple and, and, and the bearish engulfing pattern from last week hit me right in the face. So right there, before I even get to the daily chart, any idea of a bullish strategy is starting to, to weigh against uh, you know, what we're seeing, what we see here on the chart. But let's look at the, um, at the charts. All right. Right now, um, there, there is a bounce off the of support. The, by the way, these are all the previous forecast lines that I had on Apple. I'm going to leave those only because it just they they look so good. Um, these these are, I said that we would most likely pull back and bounce. We did that. Here's another one. So we were rally. We did. We hit resistance. Boom. Pull back. Now let's get to Eric's idea. He wants to sell the one uh, fifty five puts, which are right way down here. All right. So what he wants to do is he wants to sell a put, which obligates him to buy the stock ten dollars lower. Now that's that's not a bad idea because between now and um, I'm, I'm guessing you're thinking about the May options, Eric. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the idea here is to sell a when you sell a put, you're obligating yourself to buy the stock. So that's not a bad idea. Uh, but if you think the stock is going to go lower, you might want to wait before selling that put because the price of the put will go up in value as the stock drops. OK, so his first idea is that he's going to get long by selling the put. Then what he's going to do is he's going to take some of the money that he collected here and he's going to buy some insurance. So he's going to buy a 40, a 145 put. So as long as the stock stays above 155, he will make money. Now, I'm not against that idea, Eric, but I am against the idea right now today as I'm looking at the charts. If tomorrow you see any kind of a green candle, and I mean any, then I would do that. Because most likely the stock will rally up to fill this gap and or this gap before going lower. So if you sell uh, a June, you could even sell May or June option, collect that premium. I would do that, wait for the stock to go up. And then when it, um, when it fills this gap up here, I would buy back the position for a profit and just take the money and run. So that's, that's a good idea. All right, but remember, because of that weekly chart showing that bearish engulfing pattern, um, that's from last week. You got to be really be careful of that one because the stock did not go lower after last week's. Made to go lower in a big way after last week's uh, weekly engulfing pattern. Okay, so yeah, she's think, thinking about selling the May. All right, all right. Now uh, let's go to another position. Keep typing in your stock symbols. We still have about sixteen minutes left. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, David has submitted two stocks to look at. Looking for a possible long on ABBV. Is that uh, Ambev? I don't know. Is that the company that bought out? Uh, 
Oh, A, B, B, V. Okay, no, it's not A, B, B. Okay, A, B, B, V. Is that the right symbol? Yeah, okay. Looking for a long position on that one. This, oh, evidently we looked at the stock and uh, we talked about the fan lines because the fan lines are still in there. All right. Um, it looks to me like this stock has already gone through a pretty major correction. So let's let's erase these fan lines. By the way, we were talking about fan lines evidently on this one, how the fan lines are going more and more vertical, and the more vertical they go, the more bearish you get. All right, so the stock is now corrected after, again, a, a weekly bearish engulfing pattern back-to-back. -back. Bearish engulfing pattern here, bearish engulfing pattern here. Now that the stock is pulled back, I'm going to give you some test questions. This is a weekly chart. Who would like to be the first one to answer this question? Looking at the volume at the bottom of the chart, the stock has been going down. The volume is going down. What is that, bullish or bearish? It's multiple choice answer. Is it bullish or bearish when the volume drops on the way down? Okay. All of you who have answered, and that's Nathan, Mike, Deb, David, Lloyd, Eric, Jerry, Bob, all correct. That's bullish. That is very bullish. So, David, there's, there is uh, point number one with why to buy the stock. All right. So right now it looks, it looks okay on the volume. Now let's go to the daily chart. The daily chart is telling us that there is some uh, un, un, there's indecisiveness on the part of the buyers. These are very small body candles. Uh, on Thursday, you had a bearish engulfing pattern. And then it's it's like closing right on, I think it's exactly on the 20 period moving average. So if you're thinking about buying ABBV, I would wait for a more, uh, I guess you could say convincing green candle on higher volume. That's what I would do. Uh, now, you're probably thinking about this gap up here. Will this gap fill? Well, there's an 80% chance that the stock gap will fill. But when you have large gaps like that, it usually takes longer for that gap to fill. Here's a gap where the stock gapped up. It took a couple of weeks, almost three weeks for that stock gap to fill. Then once it filled, what did it do? 80% chance it will reverse. And it did. It reversed. So the stock has a history of following the gap rule uh, ideas. And so I would go long this stock, um, but if you're an option trader, I, I think it's a better idea to maybe sell a put spread, maybe buy a leap, a long-term leap in the money, maybe sell a, a front month uh, put to get long the stock. There's different ways you can do that, but I would certainly wait for a more significant green candle. If I zoom in a little bit more, I mean, you're very, very close to this being what's called the Harami. It is a Harami, but it's just so small. I just magnified the chart. It looks bigger than it really is. But a Harami is a Japanese term that means pregnant candle. Here's the little baby candle. Here's the mama candle, baby, right, in, in the belly of the mama. That's what that is right there. So that is generally a bullish sign. So if you do take a long position, protect yourself with a stop, uh, right below a key support level or trade an option with it. And then you have limited risk when you buy the option or sell the put spread, if that's what you decide to do. Okay. Let's look at your other stock. <clears throat> C A A N. Oh, C A N N. Excuse me. All right. This one is general cannabis. These stocks have been hot. Um, well, who, what is, um, Oh, let me tell you a true story. I, I have, um, I, my, my wife and I, we have multiple businesses. We take the money from the market and we parlay that into, into business. We start, listen to this, we started a nutrient water. Now, I will never be growing cannabis or medical marijuana in any capacity whatsoever. But I see a big trend in this market. And I grew up with a father who was basically a landscape designer. He he showed me how to grow and, and how to manicure and design and do all this thing. When I was in college, I was pushing lawnmowers, seriously. And, and so he, 
he taught me uh, things about about growing that I just never dreamed of. He said, you never want to be behind the lawnmower. And I said, what are you talking about? He says, well, you're doing that now. But if you want to make money in this industry, you have to be the person who supplies all the materials to those who push the lawnmowers. And this, you know, this goes back to the days of the, of the gold rush. Who made more money than the, than the miners, the people who provide the picks and shovels, right? So we started this idea, and we, we, because we have horses and we have ranches around Ocala, million-dollar racehorses around here, we started a nutrient water for cannabis growers because they can't use fertilizer. That business is taking off like crazy. So I actually have a product that's a leading indicator for this market. Now, with that said, I have to be careful. I have to be very careful because my emotional tie could affect my decision-making process. It really can. Now, here's a cheap stock, okay? Um, and and I, I might even look up this company because we'll sell them. I, the name of my product is called Stink Water. You can look at that up and see what that's about. But Stink Water, it's a natural nutrient water. Now, if you look at this, if you look at the stock, it's trading for around 405. But now here's some more test questions for you. Ready? Here, I'm going to I'm going to point out the signs and you tell me what we should be telling David, okay? Here we go. What is the name of this candle right there? What is the name of that candle and is, is it bullish or bearish signal? What is that? What's the answer? David's right. It's a hammer. Okay? Now it is bullish. Exactly. Deb, you're absolutely right. So it's bullish. That's number one. Number two, let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay. What is this little space right here from this high, which a high of 377 to this low, which was 383? What is that little space right there called? That's called a gap. Thank you, Deb. You're right on target. Now, here's the big question. What happens 80% of the time? after a gap fills what happens it's now closed you're right but what happens yes lloyd yes bob yes deb it reverses so if you have a gap that's filled there's an 80 percent chance that's going to reverse and now you have a hammer pattern that is also one of the most powerful buy signals you can get you combine those two signals this is almost a 90 percent chance the stock is going to rally so on this one i probably wouldn't wait. I would buy that one on the opening, no matter what the price is, um, because the volume on the way down is dropping slightly. That's bullish. And uh, with that all said, you know, if you buy this one for 405, I wouldn't get greedy. I would probably even be looking to sell it at five and a half. So you're taking what a 30 percent profit in a short period of time on a stock like this. Guess what? David just just twisted my arm and, and forced me to add this one to my watch list. And I am absolutely going to do that one. And we should all be thanking David and giving a round of applause for this candidate because we're all walking away with a good one right there. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, Eric, that's right. The, the lower volume on the way down is, is bullish when, because remember on the way down, if the volume is dropping, it tells us that the sellers are losing their momentum. So that's a good one. Now, for the option traders, I'm going to throw something in here because it's getting really fun. Uh, if you could sell a put spread, let's say you're Eric and you're looking to sell an Apple put spread and you could take you maybe sell. I don't know. I'm guessing that you could sell that put spread for a dollar fifty. Right. That's you're selling a put spread for a dollar fifty share. You're taking in the cash. This is one of those really good strategies that I call a a free stock plan. That's the strategy. You take money from other parts of the market. And so if you, you're an option trader and you're selling a put spread to collect the cash, you now take that cash and you buy a hundred percent of whatever you can in that cash, you buy this stock. So if you, if you collect three, uh, $4,000 of premium, you buy a thousand shares of this stock and then if everything goes well, that spread will expire worthless, and now you have free stock. And then you just sit on this thing and trade it for fun. 
that's how you that's how I did it in the 80s. I took the market's money and I started parlaying it spread after spread after spread. And then I would take some of that money and every now and then I'd take a long shot. I'd go buy silver or gold or maybe I, I, I feel really bullish and I go over, walk over to the sugar pit, buy some sugar, you know, commodity markets. Uh, you know, that this was this is the way to do it. And if you're using the charts and you're finding good, strong signals like we did here, Again, thank you, David. Um, if you're finding good, strong signals, then you're you're putting the odds in your favor. You're not just speculating. You know, otherwise, I would have been just telling you a good story about the cannabis market, right? And and that's not good. You can't trade on that story because everyone has a story. You have to have the signal that's telling you the buyers are moving into the market. And that's exactly what a hammer pattern does. Okay, uh, we have time for a couple more stocks. I'm looking at the clock. Uh, did I pass someone up? If, if, uh, I did, I apologize. All those answers kind of wash the board. If you want to resubmit your stock symbols, go right ahead. Yeah. David, by the way, between those two candidates, ABBV and CAA, CANN, I would pick, uh, the CANN over the other. That's the better choice. Okay. So, um, Steve is looking, he's considering GE. Now be careful. GE is more like a mutual fund. And GE uh, is has been really disappointing a lot of investors. You got to remember, we're in what could be one of the greatest bullish markets of our lifetime, and we may even be be seeing the tail end of that bull market. But guess what? Almost 20 years ago, right here, actually 17 years ago, almost 18 years ago, <clears throat> GE hit a high of 60 bucks, and ever since then. It's been setting successively lower highs. Now, with that said, this is a monthly chart. Uh, the good news is on the monthly chart, you have a bullish engulfing pattern. See, now I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what's called 3D charting. I started off looking at a 20-year chart. Look at Talk about a stale red light. Remember, this is a monthly chart. Three, six, nine. We have... 12, we have 13 months of consecutive red candles, and now we finally have a green one. Well, there you go. That's one that I would put on my watch list based on the monthly chart. Now, what else are we seeing on the monthly chart? Let's back up a little bit. Come on, help me out. I know you're in there with me. You're watching this. We're, we're very close to a support level right here. You see that? So this is support level from 2010, 2011. That's been tested a couple of times. This is the third time that's being tested. So there you go. Bullish engulfing pattern on the monthly on a support level on the monthly. Now let's go to the weekly chart. See how we're zooming in? Now what are we seeing on the weekly chart? Well, guess what? We see another bullish engulfing pattern two weeks ago. Bullish engulfing pattern, and the weekly volume is starting to increase. Why is this volume low today? Because it's only Monday. We still have the rest of the week for this volume to catch up. So that's still looking pretty good. We're seeing a pivot point almost to the penny on that support level on the weekly chart. What am I going to do next? Now I go to the daily chart, right? I'm zooming in. Uh-oh, little hiccup, gap, right? On the daily chart, it showed a bullish engulfing pattern on uh, Thursday. Friday, it gapped up to fill this gap. Well, guess what? 80% of the time, it's going to drop. So here you go. Your answer is about to come out, Steve. Ready? Your entry point would be right here. Look for a pullback on there and a bounce right around 14. Once you get in at 14, you set your stop. I would put your stop below. I would put my stop probably two dollars below that level or a dollar and a half below that level keep it below that major uh 20 year gap uh 20 year um support level and and then play it that way but uh ge after this gap fills down here it has upside gaps that also need to be filled so that one would be in play and like i said before i think i already have this one on my yeah do i i think i have this on my watch list already let me see i think i do Oh, GM. Oh, look at that. I'm going to put GE to watch it. Okay, I'm going to put GE on my watch list, just like all of you are doing, and I'm going to trade it. So, Steve, let me know what happens with that one. Uh, send me an email. Um, I know I, I leave that for Oracle subscribers, but I'd like to know um, how, how your success is with that. 
and make sure you don't get in any trouble. I wouldn't just because GE is that cheap. I wouldn't uh, be overloading the position uh, just because it's cheap. Remember, trades like a mutual fund, and you got to keep an eye on the general markets because a, a down market will definitely put some pressure on GE. So, you all have kept me pretty busy in this action-packed hour, and I really want to thank you for that. Um, I look forward to these each and every month because it's my way of connecting with you as a group. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Listen, remember the strategy uh, discussion I was telling you about. I'm going to continue to work on putting strategy videos out on our website. So there's going to be the video page. Click on the video tab at the top. And then there's going to be a sub tab that will say strategies. That's where the strategy videos will be. So keep your eyes on that, and I will be in touch with all of you very soon. Have a great rest of the night, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. This video segment is a small part of what the Market Guys offer through their educational products and services. If you are interested in any of our trade alert services, or you would like more information about our one-on-one -on -one mentoring program, simply contact us at info at